Hi everyone, welcome back. I have another unboxing. I seem to be doing a few of those lately. And as you can see, this one's from Amazon as well. And um, it probably will come as no surprise to you to know that I picked up another one of the Paul Rubens watercolor sets. And you can see this is a much smaller one. And what I so maybe you can see on here, this is the pearlescent solid watercolor paint. So um, if you saw my last Paul Rubens unboxing, you will have seen that I picked up uh, the 48 pack of colors. And so I wanted to add these pearlescent colors to my collection. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh my goodness, it is so cute. Okay, let me take this out and we'll get started. Um, I'll just grab the previous palette for you to, for comparison. Um, and this one is super cute. Um, it comes with a cloth just like the other one did. Um, the other one is the same size as the palette. And then we've got this smaller one as well. Very pretty. And you no, know, like I said last time, so pink, I'm not sure I can use it. <laughs> okay, so you can see the colors are different. This is a pink and this is a lilac. Um, and this one has the little hook on the bottom, as does this one. So let's have a look at these beauties. I can't wait to see. Of course, I'm going to have to undo all of these things again. Um, this one comes with a much smaller and simpler color chart. And let me put my glasses on and we can see, yeah, this one does have the colors listed with their names, which is better. The last one only had the number and it was a bit difficult for me to understand what was going on. So first step, look at these shiny little covers. The first step is to take these out and um, unwrap them. But I'll just show you the palette first, the two big mixing wells here, the four little ones here. And then we've got another four in the base of the tray if you did want to take that out and um, use this as your little uh, palette. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off. Now what I've what I um, saw someone doing in an unboxing recently was um, they took these off and then just turned them over and left them attached to the pan itself so that the, the name and numbers were always together on the actual paint. So this is called Pearl Silver White. And again, I'm going to adjust the orientation so that it makes a bit more sense to me. So I think I'll just go ahead and do this and then I will um, be right back. Okay, so there we go. I've uh, opened them all up and I think I might talk about the colors as I'm swatching because I really want to get started and I still need to add some water to make these um, activate and get all juicy. So I'm just gonna add a little drop of water with my little eyedropper to each of these little half pans. And then we will get going with the swatching, which is my favorite part. I loved the last time. It was so much fun um, just seeing all the colors come out. Uh, I'm going to put this to the side because even though it, that's what it's used for, to wash, to clean your brushes, I don't want to use it for that. And I'm going to, just before we start swatching, I'll just let those get a bit more wet. I just wanted to open up this palette again and just show you, um, so uh, I've done a few little bits and pieces with it. So I just wanted to show you what I've done. Now, you know, I'm not at all an artist, let's remember. So I just wanted to have a little practice and a play. My original plan was to take this spread that I did in my Hobonichi Cousin. I did this with some Gensai Tambi paints 
and I wanted to recreate something a bit like it. I really love this abstract nature of things and the crinkly paper and the splatter and the shine. So I used these paints and you can see here, this is kind of the color palette uh, that I was going for off to the side here. Um, not all of them, just mainly these ones here at the bottom. Um, and so what I created was this little spread here. And I think you can maybe see the colors seem a lot more vibrant. Um, and, and that's because they're very opaque. The paints are quite opaque. You, you only need a tiny amount to get a wash of color. So I was pretty happy with that. I thought that was pretty cute. And then I tried my hands at a few other things. So I'd seen a lot of this on Instagram and on YouTube. So I just grabbed um, these colors here, which is just some of these burnt uh, sienna's on the side there and I just made myself a couple little squares um, a dozen squares in fact and then just drew some little line doodles over the top uh, I just googled some um, simple line leaf drawings and this is what I got and so yeah I really enjoyed doing this I thought it was good fun and I, I quite like the neutral palette but I was actually there to excited to do my colors so I did a second one with um, these teals and blues and pinks and I really love I love both of them but these are my colors this one I gave some gold splatter to hopefully you can see that gold shine there in the light and this one I gave a silver splatter to and I did that using my Calero pearl colors because I didn't have any other pearl colors and now I have these ones I'm super excited to try that so that's the two sort of more um realistic kind of things that I did I guess you could say and then I just played around with the color um I I had all the excess paint here on the palette and I just wanted to play with it so I did this I taped it down with some washi around the edge um I used some of Trisha's watercolor paper and just played I've got gold and silver splatters on there I've got all sorts of things happening we've got drawing lines but I really just love the colors and the way the color just moves around in the paper it's fascinating to watch I just love it so much fun um so then I tried a more um what I want to say here a, a much lighter version with a lot less color so this one I actually put a lot of water on the paper and then just dropped in some colors and I added some red into this one as well I'm I'm I splattered with just just the pinks and greens that, that I had in the palette already and I quite like how this turned out as well it's super messy but what we're thinking is cutting these up into little squares and perhaps turning them into little cards or something that could be quite cute and then finally, I just had this other strip of paper left over. So I just did a very light wash with that as well. So lots of little <laughs> experiments on the weekend, which I really enjoyed. And I'm going to do more of that this weekend, I think. So <laughs> stay tuned. I hope you like the watercolor content because I'm really loving it myself. Okay, so I'll close this up now and move it to the side. And we'll bring in these little beauties. So I do have here some paper towel. I've got my clean and my dirty water set up and my little swatch chart, which we'll look at the color names while we're here. And then all I guess I need is some brushes or even just one brush would be handy. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same brush that I used last time, which is the number six shader, Princeton shader. Um, it's a flat brush. I would like a round brush, but I don't really have one with me. Um, I've ordered a couple actually to help me out. And I think this time I am just going to put a little bit of water on here like I did with the second swatch I did last time. I'll just do that first column and then we'll just drop in these colors. So let's start with this pearl white. I think we need a little bit more water there because from experience, I know that, that it's quite opaque. So I'll just lay that down there. Hard to see because it's white, but you'll see when it dries what the shine looks like. And then the next one here is called uh, Deep Interference Yellow and it looks pretty goldy to me. 
So let's see. Oh, that's a very nice wash of gold. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> okay, shiny and fun. Okay, so next is Deep Interference Orange. So this might have a coppery look, but it is quite orange in the palette. So let's see. Yeah, it's very orange. So that's going to have an orange shine to it. And we'll see what kind of sparkle is in there when, when it's drying. Okay, now we have Royal Gold. Oh, that's nice. It's almost got a bit of rose to it, like a copper to it nearly. Not quite. And I've managed to um, keep it fairly light in the amount of paint I've put on the brush there. So we'll be able to see that fading out. I like the sound of the next one. It's called Flare Red. It looks a little grainy in the pan, so we'll see how it comes out. Oh, look at that. It's pink enough for me. Um, and not really grainy. Let's see how it looks when it dries. And the last one on this side is called Wine Red. And it looks like that rich kind of, yeah, that's nice. Oh, they're pretty, aren't they? Okay, so the second side, I'll just grab a bit of clean water and put down a few stripes here. And let's dive in first with Rose Red, which is incredibly pink looking. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, love it, love it, love it. Oh, that is super gorgeous. And then we have Symphony Purple. Mmm, that's nice. It's got some depth, some depth to that colour. You can see like a grey tone underneath. That's very, very nice. And then we have Deep Interference Blue. Wow, that's a really bright blue, isn't it? It's like, it's almost like a cobalt blue, but, but brighter. Oh, and I've gone into the next one there. Let me see if I can pull that out. I might need a bit of paper towel for that. There we go, good as new. I'll put a little bit of water down, try to avoid above there. And we'll go shiny blue. Oh, and I can see the sparkle in this one. There we go. So it's quite similar, but I think it might have just a hint of green. Not, not really, but a little bit of a hint of green. Okay, next up is fruit green. It's kind of a funny name, but it does actually look just like a Granny Smith apple there, doesn't it? And that's a nice light shade of green. Very nice. Well, these are drying over here already. And lastly is our flash purple. So it looks like I've run out of water there, like it's dried up. So I'll just add a bit more. Flash purple. Let's see. Oh, that's nice too. It has a grey undertone to this one as well. I do like grey very much. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so now we just need to see how they dry. Um, and I think that will give us a nice indication. I'm really happy that this time they've given me a swatch chart that will fit inside my palette. That's very nice. So I will let these dry and come back and show you how they look. See you soon. Okay, here we go. We've, we have dried swatches and wow, haven't they dried gorgeously. We've got this beautiful shimmer, like a sheen of color and shine on there. It's really pretty. I hope you can catch that in the light. 
This pink one is still a little bit wet. I just noticed here in the corner, but I think you can still um, get a good glimpse there of how those shimmers are going to look. I think also if you keep it quite washed, um, very light, you should be able to use it as an overlay over another color. So that might be cool to try, especially if you have like blue or teal already and you overlay it with one of these pinky colors. Uh, that might look really nice. I love this. We've got like a silvery uh, platinum. We've got normal gold and we've got like a rose gold here. And then the other beautiful colors. This wine red is stunning. They're just beautiful colors. I'm really, really happy with them. So I've got uh, these ones here. And just as a reminder, there's also the standard set that I have here. This is the set of 48 uh, standard colors and then here are the 12 pearlescent colors I think or pearl colors I think these come in bigger pack sizes so that you get more colors I'm not sure I'll link whatever I can in the description box below so you can see but um, I've got to say I'm very happy with them the amount of pigment in the paints is beautiful um, really quite um vibrant and thick you know they go on the paper very um heavily if you like that you only need a tiny amount as i said to um, produce a nice wash of color so you know i can reactivate these couple here and get a lot more color out on the page as well which i will be doing very soon hopefully i find the whole process of swatching and making pretty things um with watercolor just so um therapeutic it's super relaxing when Trish and I was doing we're doing this last weekend it was just super chill you know really really nice I loved it and I think she did too so very keen to do some more of that um, and adding this shimmer to my collection is stunning I'm super excited okay guys thanks so much for watching let me know what you think I'm keen to hear if the watercolor stuff is up your alley are you enjoying this kind of content because it's a little bit different to planning i know i haven't done a plan with me in so long because i'm not actually using um the ring bound planners so much at the moment i'm really just work is so busy that i'm really just stuck in my hobonichi cousin for work and my weeks for my little play between work and home and I actually i've done some watercolor in there as well so that was good fun so lots of things happening at the moment and a few changes coming, I suspect. So yes, please let me know your thoughts on how everything's going. And I look forward to talking with you soon in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all super, super soon. Bye.